Good afternoon. It is Sunday, July 28th, 2013, here in Sarasota, Florida. And this afternoon, I'd like to talk a little bit about the West Wing. This is one of my all-time favorite television programs. And earlier this year, in the months of uh, February and March, I watched this series all the way through for the very first time, um, and for the first time since it originally aired. And I was watching at that time very, very specifically for, uh, I suppose, guidance, inspiration, and solace in terms of uh, observing teamwork, observing vision, uh, not only for the characters, but I was also watching it very specifically from what I knew of Aaron Sorkin's story. And that's not what I want to share today. But I am, I decided, interestingly, to start watching this series yet again, here only a few months later. And again, focusing on it, yes, for some entertainment and, and you know, given the isolation that I'm kind of in right now with regards to uh, focusing so much on my work all day, every day, um, you know, hopefully for no, only another couple of months, um, this is not only a way for me to kind of not be so alone um, in watching some of my old TV programs, favorite TV programs, um, and a break for from my work each day, but it's also very much pertaining to my work. I think relating like I feel I'm able to relate um, the mass media in terms of our music, our films, and TV programs, and integrate that into the other messages that I'm trying to disseminate with my work right now is going to be something that is uh, very appealing to a number of folks. So I'm going to jump in here and talk about a very powerful episode that I just watched. Season, it's episode nine from season one, and it's the episode where Jed Bartlett is um, choosing his first Supreme Court justice. And I was reminded of so many things, so many things sort of went through me as I watched this episode and took notes. So I'm going to, the very first thing is I was reminded of, of my dad, because my dad is just, he's a brilliant, brilliant man, a brilliant mind. And he was and continues to be very political. And my dad is a, is a very big reason of why most of my life when I identified with politics, um, which I do not do now, I, I really don't because I believe we very much need to evolve beyond the male energy dominated world of our political system. And I will have many, many podcasts from talking about different parts of why I believe this. But I'm reminded of my dad simply because, especially in the early 2000s, my dad was so adamant about the election of president um, in, the, in the early elections where I, my first elections where I was able to vote, he was so adamant about the importance, what the most important thing to consider he felt, and, and I can't disagree, is the fact that, you know, is taking into consideration the likelihood that a president is going to have a chance to nominate somebody to sit on the Supreme Court. Now, the first thing, you know, that, that I also think of is, or the first thing when I think about that, is how little that's even discussed even in our classrooms. I mean, I, I didn't learn anything about the Supreme Court. Any, I had my teachers... I had some amazing teachers throughout my life, but the worst teachers I had, interestingly and ironically, since I became a social studies teacher myself, were my social studies teachers. So a lot of the social studies that I learned came from my dad. My dad drilled into us the struggle, the Afri African American struggle, the civil rights movement in an amazingly awesome way. I mean, I just sucked in everything that he would talk about with us. Um, you know, again, living in Detroit, growing up in Detroit, and, and he was born and lived in and grew up in Detroit for his entire life until we moved to the suburbs, you know, in the, in the mid 80s. So, you know, dad, dad had a very, and, and my father, although he has very, very strong opinions, 
he his his he was very logical so his opinions were always based on solid factual information and and not that that made his opinions better than somebody who had a differing opinion but it certainly made it so that he wasn't just coming out of left field ever with his with his arguments with his perspectives with what he taught and, and shared with us as as young kids and and so growing up most of it was centered around civil rights so much so that i did a research paper in 8th grade god i'm sure i'm sure the assignment was probably it might have been 8 or 10 pages and my project ended up being something like 30 pages and i still have it to this day and it was uh, a research paper and you just had to choose a subject and i chose the decade of the 60s that's right. I didn't pick any one aspect. I chose the entire decade. And I, at that time, got all these books out of the library and did tons and tons of reading. And it was just a very, very influential part of my life in terms of really trying to identify as best as I could as a white suburban girl with the struggle of the civil rights movement. So coming back to the Supreme Court, when now fast forward some years when I have an opportunity to vote and dad, you know, his main concern, um, because I, I got to be honest, the very, I did not vote in the first election that I had the chance to vote in and the second election that I had the chance to vote in, well, let's just say uh, my dad almost disowned me. Because at the time I was involved in my, my ex-husband and his family were stout, you know, Republicans. And I, I didn't like either candidate. And I ended up voting for... Uh